HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll look back on a summer's worth of performances at the weekly concerts on the Common in Hopkinton. We have an update regarding the Hopkinton Public Library, and we will also reflect on some great events that took place throughout the summer. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Hopkinton Drug was named as one of the top 10 independent digital pharmacies in the country. Uh, first of all, um, to go back a step, uh, Digital Pharmacist is a platform, a company out of Texas, which builds websites and mobile apps for independent pharmacies. So um, the good thing about that is for us is that it allows us to provide a higher level of customer service to our customers. Board of Selectmen approved Public Safety Dispatcher Benjamin Campbell as a special police officer. Uh, through the chair, uh, Ben came to us about a year ago as part of the expansion program of Public Safety Dispatch. He came on and he's a quick learner and was quickly seated as we call it, trained and seated. Liz Jeffries was approved as Animal Inspector. So in this case, we forwarded Liz Jeffries' name uh, to the state. They reviewed uh, our recommendation and approved. Heather Backman was approved to be promoted to the director of the Hopkinton Public Library. I have the honor to present to the board um, Heather Backman uh, as the recommended next Hopkinton Public Library director. The fourth annual Keep Smiling for Abby Foundation field hockey event took place on Saturday, August 5th. Due to questionable weather, the event took place at the Teamworks facility on 185 Otis Street in Northborough this year. This year's event featured the classic Hillers alumni versus current field hockey team, as well as the community teams and also a few other schools such as Holliston, Tantasqua, and Medway joined in on the fun as well. The games took place to benefit the Keep Smiling for Abby Foundation. The foundation is a 501c3 charitable organization which began operations in January 2014 after Hopkinton student and field hockey player Abby Benford passed away due to an anaphylactic reaction. The foundation hosts numerous events for funds to raise awareness for anaphylaxis and to fund research. Uh, we're, we're at the Northboro Teamworks facility. This is the fourth annual Keeps Fun for Abbey Field Hockey fundraiser. We've done this three years in Hopkinton. We were planning to do a, a tournament model at Fruit Street Fields, but the rain and the adverse weather caused us to move indoors. We have tournament teams here from Medway, uh, Holliston, Bellingham. We also have a, a sort of a club team that we threw together to, to run a tournament model. So on one field, over my shoulder, we've got a parents and community leaders playing, uh, playing a game. And then we had a varsity and, parent, uh, varsity and alumni team uh, match over here on my right shoulder. On my left, over in another field, we've got a tournament model where these teams are competing in a seven on seven, uh, having some fun on a Saturday afternoon. It's a great event. All right, can you talk about how some of the other schools got involved? I think I saw a Tantasco and Hollis in here as well. That's right, that's right. So we, we thought about how to grow the event and how to expand our message to stop anaphylaxis. And one, one of the first ideas that came up was doing a tournament. So we solicited the captains and the teams uh, from these local towns and we got a strong commitment. Uh, so here we go, we're going to do a tournament model now. Yeah, good preseason work. work yeah, out. sure. A little captain's cup type of activity. And uh, I understand uh, you had to get this uh, Northboro facility pretty quick when you saw the, uh, 
the not so good looking uh, weather report. Was it an easy process getting this venue reserved? Uh, we got a lucky bounce there. When, on Friday morning, we woke up and looked at the weather for Saturday, and, and it, it had high risk of thunderstorms. And we were going to play at Fruit Street outside with no shelter. So uh, Joan Bannon and my wife sort of came up with the concept of looking inter inside facilities. Uh, Northboro Teamworks uh, had space. Uh, and we signed up right away. They were very open to having us. They gave us a lot of uh, flexibility in using the space, so it's a great event, a great indoor uh, indoor and dry day. It's kind of warm and steamy in here, though. And uh, lastly, just to remind people, could you talk about what this event is for? Sure, we're raising money to fund research into uh, early detection and treatment of anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a sudden onset of an allergic reaction. Uh, my daughter, Abby, passed away from an anaphylactic reaction. Uh, we're, uh, we're funding research at the Visa Institute at Harvard University to create such a device. We have a table of uh, demonstration table from the Visa today to talk about our, our, our project. It's called Project Abbey. Uh, so we're, that's our primary mission. We do fund two scholarships in Hopkinton, so the money we raise does stay local. We're very proud of the support from the community and very proud of our, uh, our, our foundation's give back. The Hopkinton Public Library announced they are getting close to moving back to their home at 13 Main Street after nearly two years at the South Street location, waiting for the completion of the renovation and restoration project. Here is the latest on the Hopkinton Public Library. The Hopkinton Library has released an update regarding the library renovation and expansion project. Quote, we're getting very excited to open our newly expanded and renovated building, and we hope you're excited to see it too. Library staff are appreciative to the community and the many groups and town departments who have been supportive while we have been in the temporary location and for the overall project. It is so exciting that the community is going to have a modern library for all age groups. The children's room will have an activity room, benches by the windows, computers for homework and exploring, and a puppet theater. Teens will have space to meet, read, gather around games, and collaborate on homework. Adults will enjoy comfortable chairs to read in, computers and study tables and rooms for quiet study and work. We'll also have meeting rooms available for library events and use by community members of all ages. There will be a classroom for workshops, classes, and meetings, as well as meeting spaces for large and small groups. As always, our dedicated staff will assist the community in booking rooms, finding materials, and doing research. There is so much to look forward to, and it's coming soon. The new library will be a beautiful space in the center of town for all to enjoy. We will be closing to move back to 13 Main Street in the early fall. Please watch our website, Twitter, and Facebook for updates about the move. We will post exact dates and more information as soon as we can. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll reflect back on some happenings in town this summer. Plus, we will also take a look back at the concerts on the Common throughout this summer. And Matt Clark will fill you in with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. You're locked into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hi, my name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Are you involved with a group in the Hopkinton community? HCAM can help you get the word out. Get online and head over to hcam.tv slash community groups to find out more. We will help get word out about what your organization has going on through a number of ways, including through our TV stations, social media pages, and YouTube page. We have a number of other ways we are working to get word out about our member community organizations, such as digital screen promotion, 
and we can even help your nonprofit organization produce a professional video. Find out more right now at hcam.tv slash community groups. Welcome back to HCAM News. It was another great year of concerts on the Hopkinton Town Common this summer. Here is a look at the festivities.
Ice Cream Man, dedicated to all ice cream persons everywhere. This summer was filled with great events in Hopkinton, including the first annual Multicultural Festival, as well as the annual Sharon Timlin 5K and the Keep Smiling for Abbey field hockey event. Here is a look at some of the many festivities in town throughout the summer, in case you missed it. Hopkinton Boy Scout Troop 1 served up some pasta and meatballs at their pasta dinner fundraiser. There was also raffle items available. I talked with some of the troop about the event and their experience in the Scouts. My name's uh, Joe Robert. I'm, I'm a Scout and I'm part of the Grizzly Patrol. So right now we're doing the spaghetti dinner. It's, we do it every year and it's... Right now I'm serving spaghetti, but we made it, and the meatballs come out. But it's for to benefit our troop, and so we can go on high adventure trips like Philmont and go like last year, 2016. I, which I was not on a trip. We they went to um, somewhere up in Canada, so they go on high adventure trips. Um, to sponsor scout camps and lots of other stuff, and it's a lot of fun. And the pasta is really good. All right, and how long have you been in the scouts? For? Uh, it's three years in Boy Scouts, but I've been doing it. Since I was um, since Cub Scouts. For today, is it to, to raise money? to raise money for um, scouting programs. Like I'm doing a seven day day camp out, and we really can't do that without renting snuff. And how long have you been in the Scouts? For? Uh, this would be my third year, I believe, in Scouts. All right, terrific. And um, what's your role with this event here? Uh, in this event, right now, I am I am required to you know serve. Uh, uh, d delicious looking sauce and also meatballs, I believe. The 14th annual Sharon Timlin Memorial event to cure ALS took place at the Hopkinton High School Middle School Fields. The event has raised over $1.5 million in research towards finding a cure for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis commonly known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. The event was started by former Red Sox pitcher Mike Timlin and his wife Don Timlin after Mike Timlin's mother Sharon Timlin passed away from ALS in 2002. Mike and his wife Don have since done all they can to help the Angel Fund which is an independent nonprofit charity supporting ALS research at the University of Massachusetts Hospital. As usual, the event drew a huge turnout. Well, today, you know, uh, our turnout was awesome. Uh, for the weather we had, it was a little bit overcast and cloudy, but we still were about 100 runners short of, you know, filling up the whole race. It was a great turnout. Everybody had a great time. You know, as you can see now, the weather's just fine. But we had uh, we had a uh, a great run. Everybody enjoyed it. Uh, everybody that I talked to, they had a fantastic run. It was beautiful out on the course, and we just had a great day. The Hopkinton Historical Society and Public Library hosted a presentation by Boston Marathon bombing survivor Roseanne Sedoya. A lot of people ask right off the bat why I chose to do the book. There's several reasons why. One being that for me, I, I realized early on that doing the interviews on the, the TV stations and the newspapers, for me, it was very therapeutic because I'm not sure if anybody in this room could ever m realize the words that came out that I've been blown up. I've been in a terrorist attack. You can view the full presentation on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV, and also catch it airing soon on HCAMTV. The Hopkinton Youth Commission and the Hopkinton Diversity and Cultural Alliance joined forces to bring to town the first annual multicultural festival the festival featured displays of food and art 
from different cultures, including a few displays of dance from different countries around the world. There were several table displays, each table showing off a different country. The goal of the festival was to bring together the many different cultures that live right here in Hopkinton. Hi, so welcome to the Hopkinton Multicultural Festival. Um, Margie and I just really wanted a way to connect everyone in the community, no matter what your background is. We thought that it's super important for people to just get out in front of each other um, and, and just see what your own traditions, your own cultures, your own values are. And as you can see today, we have so many different people in Hopkinton represented. We have Irish culture, Indian, African American, Vietnamese, Chinese, just a little bit of everybody. And so this is our first event and we hope that every year it gets bigger and bigger and everybody comes out to celebrate who you are. All right, terrific. And uh, how long did it take to plan today's event? Oh, so it's interesting because, as you know, I started the Hopkinton Diversity and Culture Alliance in November. Margie's been on the Youth Commission forever. So I joined Youth Commission in January. So Margie already had planned uh, to do a multicultural festival and I was working on one and so we just joined forces and came together and this is the result and we're just super, super excited and we just see that this is going to be a great uh, annual event to have here in Hopkinton and, and it's just, we're just very thankful for everyone and their support. My name is Sampada Veluri, um, I spelled S-A-M-P-A-D-A. Um, my last name is V-E-L-U-R-Y. Excellent. And uh, can you talk about what you're doing here today at the festival? Sure. So um, I'm from the school of Padam. Um, we're a Kuchipudi school. So that's a, a type of Indian classical dance. So today we're going to be doing uh, one classical piece. And then we're going to be doing a Bollywood uh, song, which is another um, Indian um, movie kind of song. So. Excellent. And uh, uh, could you talk about uh, what you're wearing a little bit? Sure. So this um, this is our Kuchipudi attire. Um, we put all of this to sort of enhance our um, dancing and our features so that we can you know, showcase our dancing and our expressions more. I'm Shweta Repali. It's spelled S-W-E-T-H-A. My last name is R-E-P-A-L-L-I. Um, I'm Pooja Thaibalapo. It's P O O J A then T H Y V A L A P P I L. You can view much more from any of these events on our website, hcam.tv, as well as our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter page. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Wednesday, August 23rd at 7 p.m., Margie and Jen talk local and national happenings and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of the Jen and Margie Show, live on HCAM TV. And at 8.30 p.m., Tim Kilduff talks with Dennis Cates, president of the Hopkinton Drug, recently ranked among the top digital pharmacies in the country, on a new episode of Business Matters. On Thursday, August 24th at 8 p.m., naturalist John Root looks deeper into the mysterious phenomenon of crop circles and wonders if they are simply human-made or of more cosmic origins on a new episode of HCAM TV special. And on Friday, August 25th at 6.30 p.m., Lisa Mancuso is in the kitchen to make a New England favorite, thick and creamy fish chowder, on a new episode of The Golden Pan. And on HCAM Ed, the Ashland Legion Baseball vs. Somerset game will air. And if you're going to be observing the solar eclipse on Monday, then be aware that it is unsafe to stare into an eclipse. Be safe and get yourself a pair of eclipse viewing glasses. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. 
Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can read about openings in town government, as well as more about the award for the digital pharmacy given to Hopkinton Drug. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. We hope your summer has been great, and as always, thanks for watching HCAM. Are you involved with a group in the Hopkinton community? HCAM can help you get the word out. Get online and head over to hcam.tv slash community groups to find out more. We will help get word out about what your organization has going on through a number of ways, including through our TV stations, social media pages, and YouTube page. We have a number of other ways we are working to get word out about our member community organizations, such as digital screen promotion, and we can even help your nonprofit organization produce a professional video. Find out more right now at hcam.tv slash community groups. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at blackstonevalleywealth.com.